How wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a story that was going viral in regards to one of the biggest medical breakthroughs. The super exciting story about the research on Huntington's disease. One of the most devastating and relentless neurodegenerative disorders that despite being rare is basically deadly. And for decades, a lot of families facing this inherited fatal condition in essence had no effective way to slow the progression, unfortunately watching their loved ones slowly become sicker and sicker. But this recent press announcement and this recent study suddenly created a lot of buzz. A small public Dutch company known as Unicure, that by the way is listed on the Nasdaq, and this will be very important in a few minutes, announced first results from a clinical trial claiming a groundbreaking success. With this claim actually being quite significant. Here a single dose of a gene therapy appeared to slow the progression of disease by astounding 75% in a specific patient group for at least 3 years. And that by itself is quite an achievement. But because on this channel I generally don't really follow the hype trend and try to focus on the science and the specifics, well, here we have quite a lot to discuss. And I guess let's maybe start with the obvious. As always, when dealing with any kind of a medical breakthrough, especially the ones announced by public companies, we must be very careful to filter out any hype and focus specifically on documented scientific facts. Because as you can see from this chart, as soon as this announcement was made, the stock increased by something like almost 500%. And while these findings do offer us hope, it's also important to remember that these are super early results and they seem to come from a very, very small group of patients. So we don't yet have a rigorous process and much more importantly, any kind of a peer review. As a matter of fact, the results themselves are also extremely limited and well, really, this is not a scientific study at all. This, as the name implies, is still a very early trial. But let's actually also talk about how Huntington's affects people and why, if this is actually true, this would be a groundbreaking achievement. And so here we have to understand why a 75% slowing of progression of Huntington's is such a huge deal. We basically have to first understand how brutally it can affect person's brain. And well, unfortunately, Huntington's is an inherited condition. It's basically a genetic disorder. And it involves a very specific gene. And because of this gene, certain neurons start to malfunction and die, producing very similar effects to dementia, Parkinson's disease, and motor neuron disease. And unfortunately for people affected by this, symptoms start to occur around the age of 30 to 40. They are often right in the prime of their working lives. And once these symptoms start, the condition progressively injures and kills a lot of neurons, starting with the neurons controlling our moods, our thinking, and our movement. And so within just a few years, the patient can lose the ability to work, to live independently, and to even think. And after about 10 to sometimes 25 years, the symptoms result in death. And so here, because of this disorder, there's a kind of a triad of issues that the patients usually have to face. We have the motor symptoms, which unfortunately involves involuntary jerky-like dance-like movements, sometimes referred to as chorea. No, not the K-pop chorea. Here we're talking about the chorea spelled this way, originally described by George Huntington, who discovered this disorder. Then we have the cognitive decline, very similar to dementia, and psychiatric symptoms, including depression, irritability, and mood swings. And today we know that all of this seems to be the result of just one single gene, a gene referred to as HTT. And this gene usually provides instructions for making the Huntington protein, something that's found throughout the body, but is usually most abundant in the brain. And so every person, including you and I, contains a section within the gene where three DNA letters, C, A, G, are repeated multiple times. And in a healthy person, the sequence repeat maybe 10 to maximum 35 times. But in people with the Huntington's, this repetition for some reason becomes extreme, appearing up to 120 times in some of the more extreme examples. And it's really this unusual excessive repetition that then results in the cells creating versions of the Huntington protein that's just way too long. And that's because, as you probably know, when it comes to protein creation, it's the transcription of these genes that then forms the protein itself that then has to fold in a certain way. And so for this protein, when it contains too many of these CAG repetitions, instead of becoming folded in just the right way, it actually ends up breaking down into much smaller fragments. And so even though the normal protein looks something like this, the abnormal version instead starts to fall apart, creating individual components that then unfortunately become toxic. And it's the 
these toxic fragments that then end up accumulating inside the brain cells, which eventually starts to kill cells one by one. And the only reason this mutation even still exists, despite being so deadly, is first of all because it generally appears much later in life, so after people already had kids, and second of all because this mutation unfortunately seems to be dominant. And so basically here, there's always a 50% chance that a child is also going to inherit this if at least one of the parents is a carrier. And well, to date, since this was originally discovered, there was really no treatment and instead the focus was on trying to manage symptoms, specifically depression and the problem with chorea or movements. And so far none of the previous treatments was able to affect the proteins themselves. And this is why this recent trial is sort of kind of exciting. Here it involved a gene therapy referred to as AMT-130. Uh, don't ask me why it's called that, but I guess that's just the name. With the goal of AMT-130 being really simple. Reducing the levels of the toxic mutant Huntington protein permanently. And in this case, the therapy would work using a cutting edge genetic medicine, specifically gene silencing, involving three individual steps. First, there's a delivery system. Here, the therapy is delivered inside a harmless virus, which acts basically kind of like a delivery truck. So basically these are genetically modified viruses whose job is to just deliver very specific genes. But in order for this virus to even get inside the brain, it actually does require a neurological surgery. Here the brain requires a complex, delicate, one-time neurosurgical procedure where the doctors have to use MRI to guide tiny, tiny catheters directly into certain critical brain regions that are usually heavily damaged by the Huntington's. The two specific regions are usually putamen, that's visible in red, and caudate nucleus, also in red. And once all of this is delivered through this injection, this is where the gene silencing begins. And so here this virus, that's normally responsible for infecting the cells, instead injects this new genetic code into the brain cells with this new code containing very specific instructions the instructions to produce a new microRNA. With this microRNA then interacting with messenger RNAs that would have been used to construct the Huntington protein. So basically the microRNA intercepts these instructions, effectively shutting down the production of the protein before it becomes possible. And though this shuts down both the healthy and the toxic mutant versions, this does not seem to affect the cell in a negative way as much. Mostly because it's really the toxic fragments that usually result in the cell destruction. So yeah, this is a super complex procedure involving some ridiculously complex genetics and neurosurgery. Which is actually why right now the cost for this procedure is approximately 3 million dollars. Yeah, that's quite a lot. But if it does pass the trial and if FDA approves this, the prices might go down to about maybe 1.7 million, which is still quite a lot. But importantly, this only has to be done once. Since the brain cells are not replaced in the same way as skin cells or blood cells, here a single dose is expected to last for a life, essentially offering a permanent protection. And here I also wanted to mention one more thing that is not really mentioned in some of the press releases. This is not just something that came out of nowhere, and this has been in development for over 10 years. As a matter of fact, there are actual studies from 10 years ago on this specific messenger RNA that was supposed to target Huntington proteins and that already showed a lot of promise even back then. And so these initial trials produced quite a lot of promising results, but it was just not good enough yet. Mostly because of various risks associated with the gene therapies and of course brain surgery. But it was really this recent 2025 data that suddenly changed FDA's mind and became a sudden sensation. And that's because this trial showed that the disease was suddenly slowed down by at least 75%. And so the initial 2016 trial was basically the start of this, but was mostly based on a lot of theoretical predictions. And now we seem to have actual physical proof. But let's I guess talk about why this is still maybe a little bit early as well. This trial involved 29 patients, but the crucial findings that the report is based on involved a group that received the higher dose of AMT-130, where 12 patients were followed for 3 years directly. And so according to the report from Unicure, patients that were given the high dose showed a statistically significant 75% less disease progression compared to the external group. And here this measure that's referred to as Unified Huntington's Disease Rating Scale which usually combines the measures of thinking, motor function, and ability to manage daily life, definitively showed scores that were much, much higher than anyone else. And so here, the high dose group also demonstrated 60% slowing in the total functional capacity. 
and so all of these numbers were very, very impressive. Additionally, they also looked at crucial biomarkers in the spinal fluid, referred to as NFLs, neurofilament light proteins. Usually, high NFL levels indicate neuronal damage, which in Huntington's disease is usually extremely high. And normally, the protein level here would spike as the disease progresses. But in the trial, the treated patients showed a dramatic decline of NFL levels, which basically implied a reduced neuronal damage and suggested that the actual treatment was working. And so here, the results were sort of unprecedented. And so here, all of these 12 patients were stable over time, which was very unusual for anyone with Huntington's. And what's even more shocking is that at least one of these patients was even able to return to work. But once again, very important caution here. This is just from 12 patients, and also just at 3 year mark, and specifically with a very high dose group. So right now we just cannot draw any conclusions yet, mostly because the group is just a little bit too small. Second of all, the comparison in this case may have been a little bit biased. The treated patients were not compared to a simultaneous placebo group, but instead were compared to external match control group from a much larger long-term observational study referred to as Enroll HD. This is a very well-known clinical research study based on many different families that struggle with Huntington's disease. And while this method might be necessary for complex trials, compared to obviously internal study with your own patients and your own placebo, may introduce bias and thus makes data just a little bit less robust. Here, for a very good medical study, you would require a randomized, blinded and placebo-controlled trial in order to make these results much more concrete. But I guess third of all, we have to go back to that public company situation. Here, findings were announced by Unicure in a press release. And as a small public company with an actual stock, a lot of these positive announcements often affect investor confidence. And as I showed you before, obviously, stock prices. And so while data is promising, it needs to still be fully published, it has to be peer-reviewed and scrutinized, and much more importantly, it has to be replicated by someone else. And so until that's done, and until we have actual studies by other teams, we're not going to know if this is really working or not. But here we have this other extra segment that we have to discuss. Even if it does work, and if it gets approved, there is still a major barrier to access just because of the complexity and the prices. Here the treatment involves complex neurosurgery and very expensive gene therapies that are only going to be affordable to someone that's already well off. And so here, the FDA and a lot of regulators are going to have to face this somewhat difficult choice. Here, they have to decide if they want to allow early access based on these promising but limited results, even though the cost of this is going to be ridiculously high. Nevertheless, despite all of this, this is still a historic discovery. Because here, even from back in school, I remember how everyone was always talking about Huntington's as potentially never really having any cure. Yet here, for the first time ever, we have this early data that provides convincing signs that a very specific gene therapy may actually work after all. Which would make it the first ever genetic neurodegenerative disorder to have been treated successfully through this very complex procedure. And that, of course, means that one day, assuming this of course works and assuming it becomes a little bit cheaper, we may also find other cures for things like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. But for Unicur, it's definitely some good news. Now, I mean, I still wouldn't really buy their stock anymore because it's already overinflated. But we know that they've been granted a breakthrough therapy designation by the US FDA, which means that regulators may feel that therapy holds promise, with the company potentially applying for approval to the FDA sometimes in 2026. And so for any family that's affected by Huntington's disease, this is maybe great news. Here we may be witnessing the first credible step towards slowing inherited diseases. But once again, we still have to remain cautious and wait for additional trials and better studies. And honestly, the progress in this field would not be even possible if it was not for bravery of patients who specifically volunteer for this complex surgery, knowing that it could be super dangerous. So this is definitely quite a story, and I'm sure we'll hear more in the next few years. And so once we have some additional discoveries and something else to talk about when it comes to Huntington's, especially when it comes to this particular trial, we'll definitely come back and discuss this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the show on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining the channel membership that grants you early access and a few more additional videos. Alternatively, you can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.